You're unlikely to meet anyone as single-mindedly determined as Daryl Floyd. But it's a resolve that comes from heartbreak. He needs to know what happened to his big brother, Terry. In 1975, the cheeky 12-year-old was abducted in country Victoria and police are convinced the boy was murdered. But his body has never been found and the case remains unsolved. Daryl believes his brother was dumped in a disused mine shaft and so he spends almost every weekend underground digging for clues. But he also thinks he knows who's responsible for killing Terry and he's decided it's time to confront the man. Hello. Daryl Floyd is digging for answers. At an age where many would be slowing down, he works relentlessly on this obsessive hunt for the body of his brother, Terry. This is a long way down. Searching almost 60 metres underground. All right. As you can see, not a very nice place. And if we look down for the past down, eight years, he's devoted just about every weekend to digging up this disused mine shaft in Victoria's central highlands. It's not only physically taxing work, for Daryl, it's also an emotional minefield. A lot of sadness, thinking this is where maybe Terry's last resting place could be. So yeah, something you don't want to think and try and look out of the back of your mind. Do you hope to find something, or does part of you sort of hope you don't find Terry down here? Well, I don't want him to be down here, but the reality is this is basically where all our information leads us to believe he is down here. Daryl Floyd is a man who will never stop pursuing the truth. And tonight, his dogged quest to find the body of his murdered brother sees him come face to face with the prime suspect. Raymond, did you kill my brother? Confronting him with the questions he's refused to answer for decades. Can you look him in the eye? No, he can't. But Daryl isn't alone in his belief that this man, Raymond Jones, holds the key to the case. He's strongly backed by one of Australia's most successful homicide detectives. In your mind, who killed Terry Floyd? Raymond Jones. For the first time, we reveal a new victim who claims to have survived Raymond Jones all those years ago. It's a bit like coming back to a battleground. And now he's about to blow the case wide open. Not a day has passed in 43 years without Daryl Floyd missing his best mate and big brother, Terry. How have you dealt with all of this over the years? You don't. You don't deal with it. You learn to live with it. That's what you have to do. Do you ever sit there and think, 52-year-old you and your 54-year-old brother out on the back porch? <laughs> Every year I think that. We should be off fishing. Should have been out fishing together. Did it as kids. But that was taken away. What would you give to just have one beer with him out of that? <sighs> My life. I'd trade. Well, I think it's fine. It was 1975 when Terry disappeared without a trace. The 12 year old had spent the afternoon playing Monopoly at a friend's house in Avoca, a town 20 minutes from his family home in Maryborough in central Victoria. As he made his way home for dinner, Terry is presumed to have been abducted and murdered. If he is watching, if he does see this and he, he knows, it's just to come home and knock on our door and he's welcome home here. I don't think he's alive. His parents died before ever getting any answers about what happened to their son. The mystery going on to become one of Victoria's longest and most baffling cold cases. 
some other avenues which uh, I need to explore. In 1999, the state's most decorated homicide detective, Ron Idles, took over the investigation. You've got to look at it and say, this is a 12-year-old boy. You know, where did he go? It's not a 55-year-old person that could have just decided to get up and walk away. So I think for the family's point of view, a 12-year-old and anyone in the community, you actually need some answers. In your mind, there's no doubt he's been murdered, is there? No, in my mind, there's no doubt that he's been murdered. But if you don't have the crime scene and you don't have the body, uh, it's difficult. Terry Floyd was seen by two locals next to a light-coloured Holden panel van that had pulled up beside him. Their description matched the vehicle driven by a known pedophile in town, Raymond Jones. The then 23-year-old admits to being on the road at the same time Terry disappeared, but claims he never saw him. This is the stretch of road, the Avoca Mirabara Road, and Terry was last seen about 50 metres up there. And we know for certain that Jones had to drive up here. Well, Jones says I drove this road and he says I left at five o'clock, so he must have driven past Terry. He had to. But he denies ever seeing him. He says, oh, I didn't see him. But if he travelled this road, which he says he did, and it's five o'clock, Terry was still here. It's Jones's previous conviction for the opportunistic sexual assault of an 11-year-old boy in a Ballarat toilet block, also in 1975, that has particularly worrying similarities to the case of Terry Floyd. If you look at the assault on the boy in the toilet block, it was a sudden urge, right? This wasn't uh, sort of a planned thing. All of a sudden is he's attacking a boy in a toilet. You've got Terry Floyd who's walking down the road hitchhiking. If Jones is responsible, it's, it's like that again. A sudden urge has come over him. But what's telling in that toilet block assault is what the psychiatrist said well, he would have done well, he said it could have even been a murder, and the, his belief is because the boy remained silent, he lived. So he's basically saying that Raymond Jones has the potential to kill. Raymond Jones is a risk to the community, but he was let back out into the community. Coming up, buried memories triggered. Over here. Right? Yeah, where are them rocks are? A new victim speaks for the first time. Crying for me, Mum and Daryl's dig reveals vital clues. We believe this is the necklace Terry was wearing on that day. Do you keep finding clue after clue after clue? Correct. That's next on 60 Minutes. This is where it happened over here, right? Yeah, where them rocks are, it was like this, grass. I mean, this is Mark the... Affleck hasn't been back to this spot on the Avoca River since 1968, a day he says he stumbled across a predatory Raymond Jones. He had his fishing rod and tackle box sitting on one of those things. That's when he took his pants and that off. He was just eight years old, skipping rocks with two mates. But what transpired here under the bridge changed his life forever. What's it like coming back here for the first time? I suppose it's a bit like coming back to a battleground. You know, one day you've got horror on the field and you come back years later and I imagine it's just a beautiful field. At 59, Mark is now revealing for the first time how he was violently sexually abused on a number of occasions by Raymond Jones. I wouldn't have weighed very much at all then. I was skinny. I was sobbing and carrying on, I suppose, and he grabbed me by the hair and pulled me up. So I wouldn't do what I was told. And I tried to run off. And he grabbed me and he shook me that hard by the shoulders. I could feel the bone, like, hitting with my head rocking backwards and forwards. I don't know how anyone didn't hear me. I was crying for my mum, as you do. Mark says he had repressed the traumatic sexual assaults for decades until he saw an article in the newspaper about Jones's links to the Terry Floyd case. 
and flicking through it, and Pandora's box opened. I was just crack like an egg. I had, wasn't crying so much. I had noises was coming out of me like an animal would make. Just, just, oh, no good. No good at all. What did Jones do to your childhood? It's not just your childhood, it's all of it. It's just, even when things seem normal, they're not. It's robbed me of an awful lot. Do you think Jones was capable of killing Terry Floyd? Capable, yes. <laughs> It's Saturday morning and Daryl Floyd is again digging at the mine where he's certain his brother Terry's remains were dumped back in 1975. The site isn't far from where Terry was last seen standing next to a Holden panel van. And underground, Daryl's uncovered several nuggets of evidence that make him believe he's closer to the truth than ever before. So, what's this? We believe this is the necklace Terry was wearing on that day. He, he was wearing a necklace when he went missing. And this fits the bill? This looks the, looks the goods. Um, also, I actually had a, a necklace at the same time. So, when you look at the design... Same sort of design, yeah. Yeah. Jewelers identified that necklace from the 70s era. It's not just the chain. There are also buttons and part of a shoe that Daryl is adamant match what Terry was wearing the day he disappeared. All potentially vital clues in this search for answers. Well, this is where um, Dusty found the little press stud, so I'm hoping to we'll find something as well. The tiny discoveries buoy the hopes of Daryl and his army of volunteers that this painstaking work isn't all for nothing. Do you ever think maybe you're trying to convince yourself that they are vital clues, but you, maybe they're not. Yeah, look, there's always that option. It could be something else. But the things, what we are finding, are significant to what he was wearing on that day. Yeah. Shoe, necklace, parts of clothing. We've now got clothing off at Forensics for testing. A uh, piece of elastic out of a small pair of kids' jocks. Uh, Woolen fibre that we believe could have possibly come from the cardigan. All these things. We're not finding anything else bar these specific items. What are you looking for here? Um, any small bones or material. In what is perhaps the hardest task of all, Daryl regularly uncovers small bones. Hard about work. Something like that. It's like a, a vertebrae. It's torment having to examine them each time. Most likely, they are animal bones. You would think out of a sheep. But there is always the possibility that after all these years, Daryl may have finally uncovered his brother's remains. So you just stumbled across some bone here. I mean, does your heart stop every time that happens? All the time, every time. You just don't know until you have a look, you have a sort, and you, you just think that one, one of these, could this be a part of Terry? Um, yeah, it's heart and mouth stuff, unfortunately, but um, something that has to be done. It's backbreaking work. Hard yakka. Hard yakka physically, hard yakka emotionally. Do you have times? Hot afternoon during the dig where you think, you know what, maybe I do just let it go. Never. Never? Not once? Never. Never. If you get to your dying day and you don't have answers, how do you think you'll feel? Well, that's why the buck stops with me. That's why I do this. I do this, I carry this burden, and it's only with me. If the situation was reversed, I think my brother would do it for me. He would. He would persevere, he wouldn't just let it go. So I'm not gonna let it go. And I also made my parents a promise that we'd always look and we'd always find him. I'm gonna honor that promise. Coming up. Here we go, here we go. The moment Daryl comes face to face. Raymond Jones, Tom Steinfer from 60 Minutes. With the man he Darryl believes Ford. killed his brother. Do you know where my brother's body is, Raymond? Can you tell me? That's next on 60 Minutes. 
There is one man who Daryl Floyd believes holds the key to what happened to his brother Terry, convicted pedophile Raymond Jones. And it's a view shared by former homicide detective Ron Idles. He was on bail for sexual assault. He has a vehicle similar to what was seen. There's about an hour and a half that he can't account for. So he is a suspect and remains a suspect. What's he been like when you've interviewed him? I've interviewed him uh, twice. Um, the very first time that I interviewed him, um, he says, I'm sick of it, I'm sick of being hounded, uh, I'm not involved, but again, he can't explain some of the time factors. And the second time, he exercised his legal right and made no comment. Literally wouldn't give you any answers. Correct, but that's his legal right. But as I said to him at the end of that interview, I offered him a polygraph. If you pass, you'll never see me again, right? If you fail, I can't use it in evidence, right? So it's a win-win for you. He sought advice and he said, no, I'm not taking the test. Here is an opportunity where he could have eliminated himself and he doesn't. I just think that adds to the weight that he is the most likely person responsible. Nestled on the Murray River, the thriving agricultural hub of Mildura is now the town that Raymond Jones calls home. And so in this never-ending quest for answers, Daryl has hit the road. It's a four-hour drive each way to search the mine site of a weekend and now a seven-hour drive from his home to Mildura. But he'll do anything to find the truth. And all he wants here is for Jones to just look him in the eye and tell him he didn't do it. Do you feel like you're almost going up to a chamber of secrets and you just want to grab those answers out? Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, just to, give, to be given something, like maybe so much time has evolved now and it's maybe time that he can get it off his chest as well and, and as I said, give us those answers that we need. Here we go. Raymond Jones, Tom Steinfer from 60 Minutes. I want to introduce you to Daryl Floyd. He, he's desperate for answers. It, Raymond, it, did you kill my brother? Do you know where my brother's body is, Raymond? Can you, can you, can tell you me? answer him after all these years? Can I get some Surely answers? Surely he deserves some answers. When confronted by a man who is clearly desperate for even the smallest morsel of information, Raymond Jones wouldn't dignify him with a single word. In fact, he was more interested in trying to find a can of Pepsi he'd dropped under his car. Can you answer my questions, Raymond? At least. C can you look him in the eye? No, he can't. C could you look him... Do you ever want to talk to me at some stage, Raymond? Did you kill Terry Floyd? Weak ass. You would think he would say something, at least. At least say something. What's it like coming here after all these years and he still wouldn't even give you a, a single word? Oh, look, oh, you always hope, and I was hoping he'd be able to tell me or give me something, but to absolutely do that and give you nothing is it, it, exactly what I thought. He's as gutless as what I thought. Perhaps the only hope now for solving this case lies somewhere out here in this bushland. But former homicide detective Ron Idles says needle in a haystack doesn't even begin to describe how difficult Daryl's search is. This is old gold rush country, so it's not just one mine shaft that needs searching. Terry's final resting place could be anywhere around this region. Realistically, what are the chances of finding Terry's remains out here? Look, I think it's very slim. We're in an area that's fairly rugged. There's 60 to 70 mine shafts within a 20 kilometre radius of here. So which shaft is he in? He may not even be in one. But don't try telling that to Daryl Floyd. The rest of his life will be devoted to making sure the truth of his brother's murder is uncovered. Is it just as important for you to find Terry's remains as it is to see justice done and someone convicted over this murder. If you sit before me now and you give me that option, I'll always take the option I want my brother to be found. That is a God-given thing. My brother does not deserve to be laying in that disgusting mine out there that he is. What do you think that day will be like, if and when it comes? <sighs> 
thought about it so many times, thought about how I would handle it, but to sit in front of you today, Tom, I can't answer that because I don't know. A lot of relief. I was yeah. going to say, you'd almost not quite be happy. It's the wrong word, but yeah, finally. Finally, exactly. There's, there it is, finally. It's the only way to put it, finally. But can you describe your emotions and how you'll be that day? I'll tell you that when it happens. Will it happen? It'll definitely happen. Definitely happen. <laughs>